We welcome in Ben Mankiewicz, the primetime host of Turner Classic Movies, to the quest for the perfect bracket show. Ben, thanks so much for coming on. We are so excited. Wayne Stats here is a huge TCM fan, by the way, has been oh, on great. two TCM cruises, runs the TCM movie club at TNT Sports 2. Yeah, and uh, and also going to the festivals uh, go, going this year as well. So I'm very, very excited. It's, oh, that's it's, awesome. I'm, yeah, probably the first person to say this, but uh, it's the, f the first thing I put on the TV in the morning and the last thing I make sure I check out at night <laughs> before oh, I go to bed. Yeah. That's so great. Uh, thanks for telling me that because we, we like, uh, one, I like your age that you're doing that. So that's good. <laughs> um, and uh, it's just exciting. So let's uh, let's hang out at the uh, festival. Let's get a drink yes. or a coffee or, or, or something. It's a good festival that. this year. Yeah, I'm there very you excited. go, Stats. Yeah. So, Ben, we all know you love classic movies, but can you tell us a little bit about your sports fandom? Maybe some of your favorite memories growing up around sports and March Madness, because that's what we're here for. Oh, I don't care for sports. Um, <laughs> the, uh, no, I, I was sure that I was going to have a career as a sports broadcaster. I mean, I just that was my my passion. I was sort of I mean, I was mostly a baseball fan, but to but I, I mean, I could easily have seen a career as a broadcaster in football or basketball too. I was, a, you know, all year, there was always something that mattered to me. Um, that came from my dad, probably trying to bond with my dad over baseball. He bonded with my cousins who I loved. They were a couple of years older and they were there during the 1975 world series and they were watching it with my dad. I thought baseball was, you know, boring. And, uh, and, but I was not going to watch these guys bond with my father. So I willed <laughs> myself to be a baseball fan in 1976. And it just, it took really in 1977. I've been an Oakland A's fan for, you know, whatever that is, nearly 50 years. Um, but I'm a, I was a big Washington Bullets fan, huge Wizards fan. And you talk about happy memories. I mean, I, this is my, this is where I keep my pens and this is, uh, oh, if cool. you can see it, but Bullets capture NBA crown. Yeah. And that was June, uh, uh, the paper was from June 8th. That was June 7th. It was just about our last day of school that year. And I just remember one running through the house when the Bullets beat the Sonics in 1978 and then going to school the next day and seeing my friends. I mean, I, I, I don't, I'm sure I've been happier, married and I have a child, <laughs> but that was a pretty great, that was a pretty great moment. That it was the first championship I'd ever experienced. I haven't, you know, I'm an A's fan and an old Redskins fan. And uh, uh, that's part of the reason the name that I bailed on him, but mostly it was the owner. Um, and, uh, um, so the, the, you know, the teams are bad now, all of them, every team I care about is very, very, very bad. Cause UCLA basketball was also a big part of our family. My father went there, was a sports editor of the daily Bruin. And then later the editor in chief of the daily Bruin and UCLA basketball from the time I was eight, even growing up in DC was a very big deal, very big deal. And, and I'm winning the title in 95 and I was on the phone with my father the whole game and, uh, uh, it was great. That was also a great, great moment. Well, let's see your March Madness bracket this year. I yeah. want to look over what you filled out. It's always so much fun. Let's talk some upset picks you've got going, maybe your final four, and then, of course, your champion. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that I did a I did a bracket. Like, I used to do brackets, obviously, of course, with my friends. Everybody did, and we, uh, we did a – you know, I think it was 86 when Louisville won the title. I, uh, everybody had a disastrous first opening weekend, the first four days. And so we did a new bracket in the sweet 16 and I, I, I hit all 15 games from the sweet 16 wow. in, which is much easier than a whole bracket, but it gave me wow. at age 19, the sense that I really knew what I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so I literally sort of, you talk about the perfect bracket and I think about that, that perfect sweet 16, which is, you know, a cop out, but. But I'm like, yeah, I already did that. I did that. I can do you it again. It. <laughs> so I'm, I'm always stunned when I like look on the, you know, after the first round and I, you know, and I go, you know, 21 and 11 in the first round. I'm like, how can I miss 11 games? I'm perfect. I know this. I know this you cold. Still, you still have this false sense of hope that you're going to Oh get my that God. It's such an unearned sense of, uh, uh, right. Sense of unearned sense of, uh, sense of self-worth. Self which, <laughs> which by the way, is the point of this whole show. Do you know the odds of a perfect bracket? Yeah. It's like one in a, a couple trillion or something it's inconceivable wayne tell them the, the real number yeah. here uh it's we're talking it's a 9.2 quintillion uh which quintillion. Is number that yeah that you know doesn't come to mind very much it's uh, uh very almost impossible let's just say <laughs> yeah it's totally impossible yeah. so uh all right well let's check out your picks what do you got tell us some of your upset picks and all the way down to your final four and champ 
Well, I mean, I, you know, look, I, first of all, I, what's different is I, you know, when I was, when I thought I was going to have a career as a broadcaster and sports broadcaster, I was, I mean, I knew more than, I certainly knew more than anybody I knew about sports. Like, I mean, and I just, you know, I wasn't like a crazy fan. I was composed about it. I was thoughtful and it's just totally gone. Like you have a life, you have a child, you have a different job. You're not working in it. And now I'm like, I can still watch a game and enjoy it in the same way. But, you know, I, I see games all the time where I don't know anybody on any team. So now it seems ridiculous that I'm even making this bracket, but I do look for, I watched a lot of championship week and I, uh, I, I think there is something to, you know, all things being equal the teams that are good teams with some good veteran teams with good guard play that get hot are worth, you know, that that's why I've sort of, I see New Mexico advancing. Um, but all year, Arizona has scared me. Um, you know, he, Tommy Lloyd's a great coach and, you know, they're, uh, they're certainly, they're deep. They play defense. Caleb Love looks like a different player than last year, than the last couple of years where he could be great at times, but he just seems like inside the system. Now he's become the, definitely the man on that team. And, um, he reminds me a little of, uh, in my memory serves me of like Matt McClung, who was this mm. explosive player for a long time. But like when he transferred, I think, I think he transferred twice, but the, at the end, like he was just a much more in control player than he, than he had been. And, and, and then they made a great tournament run with him. So, uh, and that's why New Mexico, um, uh, you know, I think can make a run also uh, given how well they played. I think I have NC state winning a game, uh, in the, uh, and, uh, and Oregon too, you know, Oregon, because mm -hmm. with Dante, they're not, a, it's not the same team at all. Like that's a, that's a tournament team. That's a, you know, if they'd had him all year, I think they'd be an eight or nine seed. And Colorado is also really deep. So I just, I suspect, I, I, I think I have the Pac 12. I think all, I have all of them went in to get to the round of 32. And I think I, I think I then threw a little Oregon extra upset to get them to the Sweet 16. Uh, Washington State winning a game. Um, I think Colorado winning the play in and then winning once to get to 32. And then Arizona have winning the national title. So. All right. What yeah. are your thoughts on your final four? So you got uh, final four. I end up with just, you think you're being radical and then you look and you have two number ones and two number twos, but, uh, <laughs> uh, you, 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 UConn and, and, and Arizona on, and then on the other half, I think I got, uh, uh, Purdue and Marquette and then Marquette. Cause I like Kolick a lot for the same reason, like veteran senior guard does everything rebounds and they have shooting around him too. And I like Shaka smart. So I'd like to see Marquette. Uh, get to the final. I think they can. Uh, I think Purdue's, you know, uh, you know, it's hard not to think about Virginia and losing to a 16 and then getting it back together. So, you know, Purdue's not just ED, although, you know, he's such a gigantic presence that's you know, literally and figuratively <laughs> um, and, and such a good player and so easy to root for. So, you know, I, I, I but I, I got Arizona and Marquette in the final and I, uh, I, I picked, uh, I picked Arizona, but if Marquette goes that far, that means Kolick has been amazing and, and I imagine that, that, but you know, it's weird. I, let me use this reference. So like the best three points, when the Cavaliers beat the, I always use Cavaliers beat the Warriors in game seven to win the title. Like one guy, LeBron blocked a shot. He's a good player that LeBron James. And then <laughs> I've heard of him. <laughs> a somewhat, right. A somewhat erratic three point shooter, right. In Kyrie Irving makes a very difficult three. And the best three point shooter of all time, Steph Curry, misses an open three. Like it's random. It's basketball. And that's, and particularly now with so many good teams and so many great shooters, you know, like whatever, the team that, that makes their open shots wins. Like it seems like, you know, game is that part of the game is not complicated. You know, getting those open shots, that's the complicated part. And then the great players doing it at exactly the right moment. But there's so much randomness here that, mm -hmm. which is why it's one in a, to quintil quintillion or whatever it is, <laughs> when, you know. Yeah, Ben, I, I, I love your picks, uh, especially uh, last year, people loved the 12s and it didn't happen. So I'm with you that we could see some 12s coming through this year. Uh, those those 12s look really, really good. <laughs> is that right? Is, were there no um, were there no 12-5 uh, upsets last year? That got to be the no. first time in a long time. 
Yeah, so it's only happened six times uh, since expansion, so it's pretty rare. So, and people love the twelves last year. So, I feel like we're due for kind of going back to the way things were, and so that's why I, I'm kind of like now. I feel like I should change my picks because ours look kind of similar with uh, you know Grand Canyon and uh, McNeese going, and I also have uh, New Mexico State going through sixteen and the eleven line. Uh, so, yeah, it's I, I love I love these upset picks. It, you know, that's what March is. It's picking the upsets, and then. Maybe change a little bit when you get close to the final four, like you said, more ones and twos and threes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. But but that said, there's just there's so, there's so many. You know, when UCLA won in 1995, I mean, I use that as my little point of reference. They won ten times before that. I'd like to point out. But the, uh, <laughs> um, but the they uh, you know there weren't there weren't 20 teams that I felt like could win the championship. Or maybe it's probably over 15. Yeah, you felt like there were six or seven, mm-hmm. and. You know, and this year, there's just so many good players. I, I watched that. I watched Grand Canyon's championship game, and I was like, God, they're long and they're fast. I mean, you're a UCLA fan. Every team looks like they play fast. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but the, uh, uh, um, they're just, again, they play fast and they can score. And I'm now, you know, whereas I used to kind of look at defense now, one reason why I don't have Houston advancing is because of what happened in the, in, in the, in the Big 12 at the end of the Big 12 tournament. Like they, teams that go through these long periods where it's challenging to score mm-hmm. i sort of i don't know they were the teams that i was uh, i'm more comfortable dismissing them even though could houston win the title of course they could and i'm not i don't I'm not disrespecting them in any way you know i think uh i'm sure they care <laughs> hey, that guy <laughs> that old movie host the guy who hosts the black and white movie he's not he's not check giving us your, yeah check your that's right that's gonna motivate room yeah it's gonna motivate <laughs> kelvin sampson right it's gonna i'm gonna be on the blackboard there uh yeah so and i like how and i like that a&m a&m can they're so yeah. like sometimes although sometimes they can't score but then they have these moments where the defense steps up and you know um, they can be uh at mississippi state can be uh electric or i have mississippi oh, sorry texas a&m i have beaten, texas beaten, A&M, yeah. beaten mm-hmm. yeah so i mean texas a&m yeah there are times they can just look so good so yeah, Ben. All of a sudden, your uh, DMs are going to be filled with angry sports fans. Like, yeah. what's yeah. going on here? Well, looking at both of you, you can obviously have movie fans and sports fans. It's what both of you are. So, I want to oh. tie the two together, Ben. I'm sure you've gotten this a lot. I know people probably ask you your favorite movie all the time, but we'll tie it into basketball. And I want to get both of you to give me your final four of classic films. Mm. It's so, exactly. it's like, you know, it's no easier than answering your favorite movie. I mean, favorite movie, <laughs> yeah. I can always yeah. get away with saying Casablanca if I need to move along, but I like talking, <laughs> I like getting the question because I, but it's hard, you know, it feels like it, you know, it does, it ends up feeling like this cop out answer, even though I think it was the greatest studio film ever made. So anyway, I made a final four. I, it could change tomorrow. Mostly, I also made an yeah. elite eight of Tom Hanks movies oh. because the last two movies I watched were Charlie Wilson's War, which I love, 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 love. I don't understand why. Like people don't think it's one of the great political movies ever. Um, it's fantastic. And Philip Seymour Hoffman's so good. And he's such a different kind of character in it. Um, and then I watched, because I always do, I watched Saving Private Ryan. So I mm. watched in like two nights and I was like, and then, you know, so I just, again, I do have an elite eight of Tom Hanks movies, but my final four uh, all time, I'll put Casablanca, uh, Paths Glory, the Kubrick film with uh, Kirk Douglas. It's a war movie and a, and a courtroom movie. Uh, Ace in the Hole, Billy Wilder's film, um, and uh, and Michael Clayton, because I, I never get never never get tired of watching uh, of watching Michael Clayton, Tony Gilroy, and Clooney leading the cast there. It's a so you know Tom Wilkinson is so it's a perfect movie. I love it, love it. That's great. I love that. Yeah, th- those are great for it. Michael, do you want me to go through mine? Uh, Absolutely. We, so, so we share we share a final four. So maybe this is the the Yukon uh, of both our brackets. Uh, we both uh, I'll put Casablanca for sure in mine. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think uh, if I had to go number one overall, I'd go, probably go with uh, Matter of Life and Death. Uh, mm-hmm. Really, I could I could do all uh, Powell and Pressburger as I wanted to, but uh, I'll, I'll I'll vary a little bit. <laughs> uh, that uh, yeah. They'll go with a. Uh, I got to get a pre code in there, so I'll go with a uh, jewel robbery. Uh, nice. Never fails to make me laugh. Uh, and then uh, move a little later, I'll do uh, all the heaven allows to get in the Douglas Cirque in there. Uh, gotta love brightly colored. You're looking. Drama. You intentionally created a rounded bracket. Like yeah, I thought I about that. I'm like, do I put like a you know, do I put random harvest in here? Right? Do I put oh, sort of yeah. like a? And then I was like, just put the things that I always move me. But I. I hear you. And to your pal Pressburger point in a matter of life and death, it was a great pick, by the way. Um, 
So with Paths of Glory, I can do a Final Four of just 1957 movies. Like I could do <laughs> yeah. Paths of Glory, Sweet Smell of Success, Face in the Crowd, and 12 Angry Men. And I'll be like, that's a totally Love valid it. Final Four all by itself. Yeah. Yeah, ask me on a different day, and I'll probably swap in, you know, 4,000 other possibilities. Um, I love you mentioned uh, Ronald Coleman and Greg Garson together, and uh, there's just, you know, great, great movie there. Um, yeah, it's, yeah it's, Random it's, Harvest. It's yeah. So great. Random Harvest is wonderful, yeah. Um, because no one asked, very quickly, uh, <laughs> at the top of the – so you have uh, a Charlie Wilson's War, Saving Private oh, yeah. Ryan, Bridge of Spies, and Captain Phillips. That's actually probably the final four, come to think of it. And Ooh. then but the, the final – the other four were uh, – uh, great uh, Greyhound. I really loved Greyhound. Oh. It was great. Uh, Road to Perdition, uh, Sleepless in Seattle, and oh man, I forgot. I forgot Green Mile. <laughs> I was going to put <laughs> nothing in common in the Elite Eight, but I probably have to put uh, uh, Green Mile. Um, but you could get to a, a Sweet Sixteen in Tom Hanks movie. Yeah, very easy, for sure. Very yeah. Easy. yeah. <laughs> well, Ben, we'll have to call you back in an hour if you're not busy and get your updated Final Four. That's right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> everything's, everything's, everything's changing. Yeah, no, I, uh, thank you for setting this up so early in the morning. I love talking basketball and movies early in the morning. Yeah, it's I, early I, for I, you I, over on the West Coast. Yeah. I did. I had jury duty, but I didn't ha I don't have to report today. So I'm, 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 well, I'm free as before, a bird. Before we let you go, Ben, I have to ask just, this might be a little bit easier for you. How about favorite basketball movie? Oh yeah. So I didn't make a favorite basketball list, but I love, I love love and basketball. Uh, a Gina Prince Blythewood's movie. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there's a, I like blue chips mostly because, well, it's pretty fun and it's good also, but there's a bunch of UCLA guys in it. I think Nigel Miguel is in it. There are a couple UCLA, former UCLA players who play basketball players in it. I think Nigel Miguel has an actual role in it. Uh, obviously Hoosiers, um, you know, uh, I love when I just love the moment of the huddle when Hackman designs the play with Jimmy as the decoy and then they, nobody says anything to them, but they're just staring at him. What? What? And Jimmy's like, I'll make it. Like, it's a great, it's a great, such a movie moment, but it's a, it's a hacky, um, cheesy movie moment that are my favorite things when the movie is good enough to deliver those moments. Right? It works. Yep. Yeah. It mm -hmm. works. Oh my God. It's so good. It makes me, uh, hoop dreams would definitely be in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, basketball uh, final four that was a documentary that sort of shook me when i saw it mm -hmm. reframes a, a little bit how you look at life um and the presumptions you make so uh uh i th that's probably love and basketball hoop dreams hoosiers blue chips that's probably uh that's probably safe for me as a as a as a basketball final four but, you know but i mean he i love he got game also you know mm -hmm. um but uh whatever that would be. They, they, uh, he got game with Spike Lee would make the elite eight. Yeah. <laughs> Stats. Do you have a favorite basketball movie before we, we let Ben go? You know, uh, uh, so I probably would go with Hoosiers. Uh, I, I mean, Dennis Hopper, uh, is, is a great, and that, that cast is just so stacked. Uh, the point I need to turn off my like historical brain and be like, well, that's not accurate. They changed that. That's not, that's different from the real story. So you got to right, like right, kind of turn yeah. that part of the brain for these movies, but totally. uh, it's hard not to get swept in just this, how, how the emotional uh, impact of it and just how, how great, you know, that, that movie looks and, and that cast. I mean, you can't go wrong with Gene Hackman uh, as, as a, as a pick ever. Um, he's just, he's phenomenal. Yeah, no, I, uh, I agree. I, uh, uh, it's, uh, some of my favorite basketball movies are the, uh, are the road to the final four uh, commercials? Oh yeah, <laughs> with, uh, yeah. With, with Sam Jackson and Spike Lee and Charles when, and Jim Nance. When those are good, they're uh, the good ones are good. Well, Ben, thank you so much for joining us. We had so much fun. You can find Ben on Turner Classic Movies channel at prime time, and he's also the host of the Talking Pictures podcast as well. So make sure to check that out. Ben, best of luck with your quest for a perfect bracket. We know you still got some hope on that. So good luck this season. If I get it here. And don't win any money off it. It literally would be the most disappointing thing in my life. Right, right. What a waste that the perfect bracket would be here. Right. Ben, thanks so much. Thanks a lot.